We're joined now by interim UKIP leader and Trump advisor Narrow Farage, who, of course, his own party literally have been allegedly throwing punches at each other. Uh, he's in Missouri. Nigel Farage, welcome to you. Um, you seem to be trying to put out fires all over the world at the moment. Let's start with the fire in America. What was your verdict on tonight's debate? There's no question Trump absolutely dominated the whole thing from start to finish. And I thought Hillary Clinton, quite unlike the first debate, uh, she was very much on the defensive. Uh, she looked pretty tired. She had a, a difficult time of it. And Trump went into this after a nightmarish 48 hours of just huge personal embarrassment as much as anything else. Uh, and it was real backs to the wall stuff. You know, if he'd performed badly here, um, I suspect his campaign would have been fatally damaged. But he's, without doubt, emerged as the winner tonight, and it's game on still. I don't think that everybody would agree with you, and I'm not uh, surprised at all that you'd say that he emerged as the winner if you're uh, involved in advising him. The CNN poll shows that she won the debate. Yeah, I just don't buy that at all. You know, I watched that first debate uh, and it was perfectly clear she was very calm, very much in control of that debate and he was the one that was floundering. Uh, and I said so. Uh, but this debate, it was completely the other way around. Look, you know, you're quite right. You know, he went into this debate in real trouble. You know, uh, you know what's been exposed in terms of what he said, uh, you know, is, 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 is really very, very ugly. Um, and in fact, the first 15 minutes of the debate were almost hard to watch. I can imagine millions of Americans shifting uneasily in their chairs. The big message in, in the United Kingdom, the USA, and now in many parts of Europe is the little people, the put upon people, have had enough. They're sick to death of a politics that is virtually owned by the big banks and the big businesses whilst they economically get left behind and they want change. And I think what's interesting is the polling industry finds it very difficult to find people who've never voted in their lives but intend to vote in an upcoming election. Okay. If you look back at Brexit, Piers, two and a half million people who had never voted in their lives turned out on June 23rd and a majority of them voted for Brexit and that's what tipped it. Now, here in the States, what Trump is trying to do, he's trying to reach out to those blue-collar workers, trying to reach out to people okay. whose manufacturing industries you know, have been in such grievous decline. And, 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 you know, and if, he's able, if he's able to tap into that sufficiently, then yes, you could get a big shock here too. Nigel Farage, okay, people might be watching you this morning wondering why you're explaining Donald Trump's behavior and assessing his performance. When you <coughs> had um, one of your own representatives in hospital, allegations of um, you know, fisticuffs, assault, whatever you want to call it, which um, la ended up with this chap lying mm. face down on the floor uh, and then treated for injuries. And, you know, splits within your party, uh, a, a leader who stood down, which means that you are currently leader of UKIP, but over in the States analysing American politics. Why is that? Well, well we're going to have an inquiry into what happened between two men who faced up to each other, an altercation that happened last week, and it shouldn't have done, quite right. Uh, although, you know, I can remember John Prescott as Deputy Prime Minister punching a member of the public. I mean, things like this sadly do happen. There'll be an inquiry in Brussels on Tuesday, and I will be there, and we'll find out the truth about exactly what happened. But right at the minute, I'm not going to apportion blame to anybody until we get those conclusions. And yeah, some, you know, you get last week, had a very, very turbulent week. There seems to be some confusion over whether anybody threw sure. a punch. Can you just clarify whether anybody was actually punched or threw a punch? I don't know. I, I really do not know what went on outside the door of that room. Uh, I've heard claim and counterclaim, but by having a proper inquiry um, and by getting everyone that, was, everyone that was there to make statements, we will establish the truth of this. Is there any way that somebody could fall through a door and end up a few minutes later flat on their face, unconscious, if somebody hadn't landed a blow of some sort that you can think of? Uh, 
it's possible, isn't it? You know, I, mean, I could, you know, push somebody and they could trip over backwards or they could, you know, trip over the carpet. I don't know. Maybe he was punched, maybe he wasn't. Let's get to the bottom of it. Let's sort it out. Either way, last week was a very difficult week for UKIP. But you know what? It's not that bad. We're nowhere near as split and divided as the Labour Party find themselves this morning. And just, just finally, if you think there is a possibility someone could have thrown a punch, would it not be sensible to call the police? Mm -hmm. Well, I, let's get, I mean, you know, the police get called to incidents when somebody reports a crime. I don't know what has happened here. I will find it out. And you know what? If we find, you know, that something really bad did happen, uh, then we will take appropriate action. 17 million people have voted for leave. Yep. Based, I don't know how many people voted on the basis of that advert, but that was a huge part of the propaganda. You're now saying that's a mistake. We have a £10 billion pound a year a £34 million a day feather bed that is going to be free money that we can spend on the NHS,